Artificial intelligence has become quite the buzzword in recent times. We have been reading about it everywhere. But do we really know how much of an impact is it making in our lives? With AI set to dominate the future of the work, what does it mean for the retail industry? As customers, decision makers and prospective adopters of AI technology, let's listen to Tom Summerfield, Retail Director at Big, and turn the next page on AI exploration. Hi everyone, welcome back to one more podcast with Analytics Insight. This is your host Rangoli and today we are in conversation with Tom Summerfield, Retail Director at Peak, an AI platform that helps businesses harness the potential of AI to grow. And today we will be discussing AI for the Indian retail industry and the future of customer servicing. Hi Tom, it's my pleasure to be in this conversation with you today. Hi Rangoli, it's uh, a pleasure to be here. Thanks for thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's start with telling our listeners a brief about you and your role at Peak, and a brief about Peak as well. Yeah, sure. Um, so um, as you mentioned, I'm the I'm, I, I lead everything we do from a retail perspective at Peak. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been at Peak around coming up for three years now. Um, so which uh, I think um, they are actually like dog years uh, working uh, in any sort of tech tech scale up business. Uh, so it feels like a lot longer. Um, although I was I have been around Peak longer than that because I was actually a customer of Peaks before mm-hmm. I joined. And actually some of my background is uh, oh, wow. management like management consultancy. Um, I've had some of my own businesses in the branded and retail space. So um, I have lots of retail experience. I know lots of uh, good things about retail. I know some bad things about retail, uh, which, and that makeup <laughs> has brought me uh, brought me to where, where we are now at Peak. Okay. And uh, a brief about Peak as well. I think that that's what we'd love to hear. Of course, yeah. So, so Peak is um, we're an AI company, um, and I know you. Th- uh, as per your introduction, there's lots of AI everywhere now, um, yes, so in var- yes. va- varying degrees of uh, sort of gravity. Uh, so, Peak, we, we we're about eight years old now. Um, mm-hmm. We are like Series C funded, uh, um, so we're we're in scale up mode. Um, essentially, we've we've built over those years. Um, we built an AI platform that has um, the capabilities to harness data from across an organization. We have a bunch of uh, applications then, um, and then we have some services as well that help help bring it to life and we we play in the retail industry that's probably our maturest vertical uh, but we also play in the cpg so consumer packaged goods and then the manufacturing industries as well uh, we have a few other customers in sort of financial services and logistics but those are our those are our main verticals but retail is probably the one that we're becoming really really famous for Oh, well, thank you, Tom, for giving us this brief about your wonderful professional journey so far and uh, Peak's goals and visions as well. Now that we have a fair idea about Peak and what it actually does, could you brief us on how can Peak's AI application help retail businesses in data management? Yeah, of course. So I think um, there's a, there's an important distinction to be aware of um, before I just... <clears throat> excuse me, talk about the applications themselves, because many, many different types of complex businesses in retail are on, are moving at different paces in terms of their journey and uh, to harness the data that they have. And there's an, the, the exactly. distinction, the distinction that I mentioned is between analyzing the data that you have. So which is no mean feat, this is tricky um, at times, but actually just mm-hmm. getting a grip of your data and analyzing it versus then being able to make predictions with it, which is ultimately what AI does. It helps mm-hmm. you to model and then make a forecast and predictions into the future. So this distinction is is crucial because um, then you can understand like where, where certain businesses are on their journey. Now, where Peak um, plays is very much in that prediction space. Um, we do help with some of the analysis stuff as well, but really we we major on the prediction stuff. And this is where our applications that we built, we built a library of applications um, over the years that we've been doing this. And really, mm-hmm. 
if you think like companies are producing more data than ever before um and yeah peak peak helps to corral harness bring together that data and then and then make predictions for a variety of retail challenges and what what peak sort of it, uh, it isn't very romantic to talk about it like this, but what we are only interested in helping uh, companies commercially. So we don't just do data projects for the sake of, so we can tell people, oh, we're doing cool data projects. We okay. are all, everything we do is always predicated on helping our customers either make money or save money. Um, so we have our applications all geared around those fundamental challenges of like the operating models uh, and, and challenges and opportunities that exist. So like changing consumer behavior, um, supply chain challenges, uh, various volatility that can occur across the value chain of, of a retailer. We specialize across the whole thing. Thing, basically with our applications okay well that is very comprehensive tom and i must say uh, peak's customer driven strategies will definitely benefit them in this ai driven world that we're living and uh, as you said uh what what we what you do at peak is not very romantic but i feel it's it's sometimes <laughs> uh, non-romantic things are good right <laughs> so uh, well on that note could you please elaborate upon the impact of inflation on retailers at the moment like how can advanced technologies like ai help in managing such a situation yeah it's obviously a huge challenge that impacts us all as consumers and then with the businesses that we either work in or work for or work with it's an enormous challenge and it, i think um yeah it, it doesn't feel like something that's going to be going away anytime soon in its current guys although it's always present in certain certain spaces i think that what we are seeing is that the global supply chain is starting to some of the pressures are starting to ease a little bit but then curiously because people have been behaving in certain way, like people uh, you know people inside businesses have been having to behave in certain ways to protect themselves against the, the some of the massive macro challenges that have been um putting stress on the on the various supply chains now with them eat with some of those pressures subsiding actually to revert to all behaviors or whatever this version of like a uh, new sort of normal that we're in it means that making predictions without the aid of ai um is just even it's it's never been harder than than how it is right now so if you think if you think for example so some so our applications specialize in three main areas we call them we call it customer intelligence demand intelligence mm -hmm. and supply okay. intelligence now if we focus on demand intelligence for a moment and if you were to be a um a senior merchandiser in a fast moving consumer goods retailer say um, where you've got lots of um uh you know different consumer habits and behaviors that impact how you buy and plan to have stock in your business for the past like two or three years uh well no sorry two years certainly um we've had people really like uh, scratching around for stock and, and and trying to just secure stock where possible so i've heard this mm -hmm. phrase like um from senior merchandisers like they'd rather be looking at the stock rather than looking for the stock which is a reference to they would rather <laughs> have overbought stock and be holding okay. it in maybe extra warehouses that they've got to try and just meet consumer demand because they can't do their revenue numbers without the stock so they'd rather just increase their storage to have it now if you fast forward to like now where as i mentioned some of those supply chain pressures have eased a little bit and actually now we have got a situation where many businesses are overstocked so this is now costing them extra money. It's causing all sorts of different challenges. Um, now, if, in this ever-changing world, this is where, um, and uh, I mean, this is slightly um, separate to inflation uh, and, and some of those pressures. It means that more than ever, you need to be able to make predictions. So armed with the data that you have in massive systems across your business, 
if you could leverage the power of artificial intelligence to make better predictions, then you would be able to plan better for what stock you need in your organization. And this is a good example where, where, where there's inflationary pressures. You don't want to be tying up too much money in stock that you didn't need, but also you don't want to be missing, missing any uh, opportunities and disappointing your customers. Um, so this balance is with some of those extra macro economic pressures just more challenging true, true. than ever yes well definitely tom and i personally feel that the scenarios that you just mentioned make us believe more in the power of ai day by day right i i feel you yeah. same this uh, you feel the same so and that actually makes me think on how retailers can get greatly benefited if they take some data driven decisions right so um, on that note could you elaborate more upon why is there a need for retailers to make such data driven decisions so um if i, th I think about um maybe a bit of my how i how, why i come to be uh, sort of excited about this stuff these days like my background is not data and analytics i don't mm -hmm. claim to be particularly technical uh, you know we've got some amazing brain power at peak um and i don't count my own in that um it, it, but if i think how i've arrived at this point it's just because the best way to transform certain processes to deliver consumer uh, you know expectations to free up stock the best way to do it is by using your data and then even to make predictions with it so i think it's no longer like it it would be it would be classed as like innovation and a nice to have and um that like oh yeah we'll do, we'll do that next year we'll start to get good at that next year like now to be a retailer in this world and not be leveraging data with this capability could be the difference between like surviving or not basically i think it's that it's that serious uh, that you should be trying to leverage it. And I think people are aware of this. Um, and, and, and this is like a well-trodden like talk track now. People don't need co necessarily convincing of the power of, or, or like the, 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 um, the enhancement that it can bring to your business by using your data. But then I do think it, you quickly step into like, well, how, how do we do it? Because if I think of like listening to the market at peak over the last two or three years, I would say in 2021, people were would say like, yeah, no, okay, I understand. Like AI makes everything a little bit better, but you, but are you going to have to show me how, please? I don't, I don't know how. Last year was a little bit different, where people seem mm -hmm. to have a better awareness of the how, and now I'm more interested in like the detail now. Like, okay, I understand that you can use AI for these types of things. So like making our pricing strategy more intelligent, like you know, our markdown strategy or how we buy stock. I understand that now. Or how we do customer segmentation to better personalize some of the communications we're sending. People seem to have a, a good understanding of that now. But actually like how they get it going with the detail that procurement teams and IT teams need is the is the phase that we're, that we're in right now. So I think that, back to the question like why is it why is it so important like, I, I think you you, just, it, it, you possibly won't survive if you're not really trying to get good at this stuff mm -hmm. um but then yeah. addressing the big fundamental challenges like so whether it's like stock procurement pricing some other elements of the supply chain and your customer work this is where you should focus um and this is the best way to do it, basically. Um, and uh, this is why it's so important. I think that the maturity of different businesses is 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 interesting then and the paces that they are moving at. True. Oh, uh, well, absolutely, Tom. Uh, and I absolutely agree that the retail sector has been going through a digital shift for a while now, right? Uh, like every branch of retail has seen a rise in speed, efficiency, and accuracy in large part because of the sophisticated yep. data and predictive analytics technologies um, that truly, truly support businesses in making such uh, data-driven business choices. So, yep. and thank you so much for such an insightful answer on the same. So before we move to the final question, um, I would love to know your views upon AI eventually eliminating the need for in-person shopping. Like, do you think are we already seeing this trend taking place? 
Oh yeah, well, the, so this is an interesting question. I actually, I, I, I care quite a lot about this answer, and like, so the quick answer is no. Like, no, no. it would. I actually don't think it will be decades before uh, people stop really? shopping. Is yeah, and and it probably and AI probably won't be the reason. I uh, is is what I would suggest. So I because I, I when I think to my time, so when I as a, as a customer of um, that's quite ironical if you think right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I think like, so I think just human nature that there's probably some deep lying psychological stuff that means we do actually just like leaving our houses and trying to go shopping sometimes. But yeah, I think what, what um it's an amazing, so if you can capture the data, so essentially, if you are a retailer with shops, if you are harnessing the data that is in those shops, then I would mm -hmm. actually make a case for that you have an advantage over a pure play online only um, re retailer because, and I can talk to some of my time when I was a customer of, of Peaks, um, I was working uh, with a, uh, a, a, a retailer in the UK, a multi-channel retailer in the UK called Foot Asylum, who are like a sort of uh, sneaker footwear and apparel um, business. And, I was doing a lot of work with Peak um, in the, with, with with AI, and we were focused on like working in the customer space. Now, actually, something that I launched whilst I was there was a loyalty scheme because, and the reason why I did that was because I wanted the data out of the shops. So a little bit like Tesco do in the UK with the club card, um, and we probably all have like various. Uh, we're signed up for various loyalty schemes ourselves to be able to harvest that data point in the stores and track those types of behaviors um, in a way that is, uh, you know, respects people's privacy, but like can help you understand like basket analysis in stores, purchase frequency, these types of things, gives retailers with a physical presence, in my opinion, an amazing advantage if they use the data correctly. So I think for that reason, um, we shouldn't be, like I think there's a bit there's a, sometimes a little bit of scaremongering that goes on with like the cost or, or like implications of physical stores but no I actually think that they are an amazing um, source of data used correctly and I think the businesses that um, are doing that you can see are the ones that are winning and I think that they will continue to look after their store estates as a result of it which will mean people keep wanting to go in them um, and I think that's the perpetual motion of that like multi-channel even omni-channel um dynamic that we'll see for a long time so yeah the quick answer is no no i'd i'd i would say absolutely not it we, we we're going to have stores for a long time yet yes and even i feel very convinced after this answer that we are going to have stores <laughs> for a very long time so yeah thank you so much for uh, such a comprehensive answer tom and uh, so finally uh could you could you brief us a bit upon Peak's goals and visions? Yeah, oh, that's a good question. Um, so I think <laughs> something that um, Peak feels really strongly about is that we're wanting to democratize AI to everyone, every business user um, globally. Now that uh, you know that would be a sort of a vision, a vision statement, if you like, and and the mission statement probably to accompany that is along the lines of we're doing that because we, we we built our platform we want to continue to enhance and deepen the capabilities of our applications and importantly where we where we were talked about our services offering at the start i think if um, i referenced earlier as well like if people understand that ai can help now they start now they also understand um or are starting to understand um people have varying degrees of understanding of course um like what and what and how it, it can, in what way it can help that i think how to bring it to life is something that we feel that we have a, a nice edge at with peak and it's this services element it's the cool people that we have to help transform and bring our customers and hopefully our future customers on the journey of being able to do this because um, that's the most important bit really like the data science and the really technical stuff is impressive but it only matters if people are going to use it so I think when we talk about democratizing AI it means that we will always try and do it in a very straightforward very practical very valuable way for our customers um, and I think if we 
if we can practice what we're what we talk about there then then that is that is the journey that peak is going to continue to go on and um, we've got customers all over the world we've got some really cool customers in india for example because we're headquartered oh, yeah. in the uk <laughs> but we have some we have some cool customers in india interestingly the maturity uh, uh around data and ai is probably uh, at its highest moment in India compared cool, exactly, to the exactly. compared to the UK and uh, and and some of our US customers, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, so, so so looking to um, to just do more of the same, really, and, and and continue to take our customers on on that journey. Wow. Well, I think you just made us look at the bigger picture, if I'm not wrong. So <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's wonderful, Tom, and I believe that you've given our listeners a sneak peek of what future retailing could look like. And uh, artificial intelligence is set to open up newer opportunities by the day. And as a digital first country, the onus is on us to become early adopters, right? So uh, I feel AI will revolutionize the way we sell, buy, and do everything in between. So thank you so much, uh, Tom, for connecting with us today and letting us dive into your views on AI and retail management in India and across the globe. And it was a pleasure to have you on board with us today. Thank you very much, Rangal. It's been great chatting to you. Oh, yes. And I must say the interaction was absolutely insightful and our listeners enjoyed it as much as I did. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this. And I will see you with another great interaction.